Hi, my name's Phoebe Kingston. I'm owner of Through the Rabbit Hole and I've invited to make this short video about peer support for a WO website, The Recommended Therapist, a brilliant creation by Renee Ferry. Amongst many of my mental health related roles and passions, I've been working as a peer support worker for a few years and I'm often asked, what is that? And so, a peer support worker is someone who has a direct, lived or personal experience um, of mental health issues and or related diagnoses, or someone who is caring for someone encountering those issues, usually called a consumer peer support worker or a carer peer support worker, respectively, and I'm the former. You may have heard the term peer work, and uh, that's really an umbrella term, and falling under that um, are a lot of different um, peer roles, and uh, they are all quite different and distinct from each other. So for this video, the important distinction to make is that a peer support worker is a frontline position. So this is working on the ground directly with service users on their personal recoveries. And in this video, I'm not going to talk a lot about the, the history and context of peer support, evidence base, um, and its sort of infrastructure and architecture um, and, and governance um, in Australia. So let's get on to it. Uh, what is peer support? Um, peer support utilises um, particular principles and, and ideologies, and there is a strong philosophical and values base to peer work. Um, so, so for me, when I meet uh, a new service user for the, for the first time and, and I want to engage with them as a peer support worker, I tend to always explain it along the lines of five key points. Um, so the first one is that um, I'm to hold time, space and, and hope for someone and the inspiration that recovery is possible. Um, hope is so important and at the heart of every peer worker is a absolute core belief that recovery um, happens, it can happen for everyone. Um, secondly, it's about um, mutuality and reciprocity. So it's this idea that I'm learning and growing and benefiting as much from the peer relationship as the person that I'm supporting. Thirdly, um, you know, key goal of peer support is to support someone's self-empowerment and all the things that that entails. So it's about um, self-agency, um, self-determination, self-advocacy, self-actualization and, and hopefully all the way to self-mastery. And a lot of that does involve um, supporting some particular uh, genuine self-education, um, especially around uh, perspectives and, and choices available um, to someone. Point four is quite important always to say is that a, a peer support worker is not a clinician and they don't provide a treatment. Um, it is not a therapeutic or clinical relationship, although arguably it does provide some very therapeutic um, style benefits. Um, but it's really about building a peer-to-peer -peer relationship. Um, it's about equality and it should be as close to completely free of power imbalances as possible. And that is hard in certain systems, um, but it should always be mitigated. And uh, number five is kind of along that line that um, uh, peer support workers um, it, it do often have to, to write legal notes on their interactions um, uh, with their clients if they're um, in, in certain services. Um, just as clinicians do, for example, I have to do a lot of um, legal notes and documentation because I, I do work in statutory services um, and peer workers in these settings um, do have to do that and they do also sign a duty of care. So they have a couple of similar responsibilities to clinicians um, on that regard. The, the final thing I say is that it, it's actually very hard to explain and contextualise peer support, um, you know, what it is and, and how it works exactly. Um, it's really something that you begin to understand as uh, and create as you go along you know and that goes for both parties you know it grows very um, organically and what peer support is and means for one person will be something completely different for someone else um, you know when I first made a, a, a new service user um, I have absolutely no idea where it's heading um, and what it's going to look like and that's the beauty of it um, it's so much more um, personalized and really individually tailored to a person more so than any other supports um, and services. Um, 
you know, one thing that I'm usually very um, quite certain of is that there will be a, a connection somewhere and growth uh, for, for both of us. So how does a peer support worker use their lived experience exactly? And in a nutshell, it's primarily about um, storytelling and it's called intentional sharing. Um, and there are some, some models that really delineate this. Um, Sherry Mead's um, intentional peer support IPS model um, is one. And whether or not that's a model we say we're using in a certain service, you know, officially or not, every peer support worker is sharing intentionally. It's, it's a requirement of the role. And um, there's always a reason um, for personal storytelling and, and different stories and different parts of stories can be told and retold um, in different ways for, for different reasons. Um, the, the basic and, and fundamental principle um, is that this personal sharing is an intrinsic part of peer support work and the bond and connection and rapport that is created um, through shared experiences, you know, commonalities and parallel personal stories um, is the key relational component that makes peer support work so different, uh, so meaningful, powerful, um, unique and very beneficial on so many levels um, for the person walking their own journey to mental and emotional well-being and doing and, and thriving. So for anyone who's considering using a peer support worker, I say jump in, write your own story um, alongside someone who's already written a few chapters and is still continuing to write.